Hey everyone, this is Nick and welcome to your weekly Linux open source and privacy news video. Since the last one, Google Analytics has been declared illegal in France after ruling on the EU to US data transfers. Google has released a fully installable and free to download Chrome OS version that you can try on your own PC and Proton 7 has been released with a ton more details about the Steam Deck. And also, for once, I'm going to talk about today's sponsor right now, but also during the video, because there's a piece of news about it. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities, or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linode, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now, on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied. I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. Okay, now let's get into it. Google Analytics is now illegal to use in France. While the service itself doesn't risk much, websites that use it will have a short delay to replace it or could be subject to lawsuits. The reason? The privacy shield that supposedly guaranteed privacy for data from EU citizens that was moved to the US has been found insufficient and in breach of the GDPR, the European Privacy Regulation. This means that there are three solutions. Either Google modifies Google Analytics to not transfer any personal data, including IP addresses to the US, or there's a new agreement that replaces the privacy shield with something that doesn't breach the GDPR, or websites in France won't be allowed to keep using Google Analytics if they want to avoid lawsuits. Honestly, Google Analytics is such a mess in terms of user interface and legibility compared to other alternatives like Matomo or Plausible that it's not a bad thing. Just get rid of it. Google has released Chrome OS Flex, a freely installable version of Chrome OS that's based on Cloud Ready, which was a freely installable version of Chromium OS. Basically, it's now like a Linux distro. You can create a USB install disk and boot from it to install Chrome OS, which kind of is a Linux distro, as it's based on Gentoo. The install process will require that you use a Chrome extension, and apparently installation will wipe out your drive. It doesn't offer a way to dual boot out of the box, and it also doesn't seem to support Android apps once installed. It does, however, have a live session, so you can try it out and see if that's something you'd like to use. I'm definitely going to give this a shot in the future and probably make a video about it, but I couldn't see myself using such an OS daily. My data is not yours, Google. My favorite Linux VPS that's also the host for all my servers, and also the biggest sponsor for a lot of this channel's videos, has been bought by Akamai. That's right, Linode has been gobbled up by the giant content delivery network provider. The synergies are pretty obvious with Linode hosting the servers and Akamai providing the content distribution network so they can have the whole server chain. The purchase was made for $900 million, which is a nice big number. I don't know much about Akamai, but the fact that they included the metaverse in their press release makes me laugh and makes me scared in equal parts. Please don't ruin my Linode, I need it for my servers and I also need their money to eat. Please. Intel's new CPUs of the latest Alder Lake generation mix some efficiency cores with some performance cores, like what we generally find in mobile CPUs. And now Linux will be able to take advantage of this hybrid configuration. Until now, Linux didn't really see a difference between these cores and just used them all indifferently, which didn't really translate in any benefit or good performance. Intel has now released their Thread Director, their intelligent low latency scheduler, and it's being merged into the Linux kernel for version 5.18. This means that on these CPUs, Linux should get better battery life and better performance with that new kernel, stated to be available in May. Which is a pretty long delay if you bought a laptop using these kind of CPUs to actually get the full benefit of your hardware. 
Come on Intel, don't be like AMD, we need day one support, you can be speedier than this. KDE applications saw a bunch of updates in February, including Falcon, the web browser that I thought was dead but clearly isn't, Calendar, which saw its first 1.0 release, which we'll talk about specifically in a minute, and other updates, which include Rucola, the Rocket Chat client that now supports Emoji, J'ai Compris 2, the educational game, which is getting new games for kids, or the appearance of a new app called Scanner, which, as its name implies, lets you scan QR codes. I wish these KD application news were bundled with KD Framework news and KD Gear news and KD Plasma news, so I could just make one big video to cover each new release. It would be much easier. Now, since we were speaking of Calendar 1.0, this app is a fantastic replacement to K Organizer, the aging calendar app for KDE. This first table release brings a ton to the table, with way better notifications that display the remaining time and some useful action buttons. The calendar colors are now displayed throughout the application to make them a lot easier to identify, and that's also the case for task lists, which calendar supports through CalDAV. There are two new views for single day and three days, and moving to the now view now displays a nice animation. There are tons of smaller improvements and bug fixes, and honestly, I think Calendar might very well be the best calendar application on Linux or on any OS that I've used. Lutris 0.5.10 Beta 1 is now out, which finally lets you try its new Origin and Ubisoft integration. I previously incorrectly reported that it only lacked support for Epic Game Store, but it turns out that it already has that support, which means that Lutris is now a complete game library manager that lets you get all your games in one place and launch them from a single app. That's super cool, and that new beta also includes a revamp of the way you can add a game to Lutris, with many options available like scanning a folder for a pre-existing game, installing a Windows game with its setup file, or searching from the Lutris website, for example. There is also an option to enable BattleEye anti-cheat support. All hail the mighty otter that makes our gaming experience so awesome. OBS 27.2 was released, and while there aren't many incredible new features, it marks the first release to be officially packaged as a flat pack and distributed on Flathub. You could already install an unofficial build from there, but the new official one brings a lot of advantages. It's built through their continuous integration pipeline, it automatically embarks the right CEF version for the browser plugin to work, and the right FFmpeg version so everything encodes as it should, and all the encoding methods are correctly supported. It also makes plugins available directly in one click in the various app stores for Linux, so you can manage each plugin and install or uninstall it directly from OBS's page. Flatpak is truly an amazing packaging solution, and when the package is official, it's even better. Wine 7.2 was released, and this new development version brings a large-scale cleanup to support a new variable type, and an update to the Mono engine to version 7.1.1. As a reminder, this lets Wine run .NET programs. Wine 7.2 also embarks fixes for the recent theming implementation, and most importantly, the beginnings of a WMA decoder. 23 bugs were also fixed, including for games like Half-Life, the CD version, Call of Juarez, Grand Theft Auto V, and a lot of other applications. Based on Wine 7 is also Proton 7, now available through Steam. It's based on Wine 7, obviously, and adds DXVK 1.9.4, to support DirectX 9, 10, and 11 games, and a newer version of VKD3D Proton to run DirectX 12 games. It also updates the Wine Mono engine and brings some changes from Proton Experimental to ensure better performance. Games made playable by that new release include Call of Juarez, Forza Horizon 5, Monster Hunter Rise, Persona 4 Golden, Resident Evil Zero and Revelations 2, Yakuza 4 Remastered, or Anno 1404. Anti-cheat support also saw some improvements, H.264 videos can be decoded locally, and you'll also get some fixes for Steam input in Origin titles, as well as fixes for audio in Skyrim and Fallout 4, and the Paradox launcher should now work better. I would expect this to be the final major release before the Steam Deck arrives, and so they obviously put a lot of effort into it. Speaking of which, Valve released some Steam Deck CAD files that will let manufacturers or regular users create cases for their deck, or even replace its shell with something else. It can also let users 3D print a dummy Steam Deck to see how it feels in hand, if the buttons are reachable, it's just a generally very nice thing to do. All the files are on Valve's GitLab under the Creative Commons license. On top of that, Valve announced that iFixit will be one of the authorized sellers of Steam Deck replacement parts, 
which means that it will be possible to replace parts, but also that there might be multiple companies to choose from. The deck seems like it's taking a pretty open hardware approach, which is really nice. And still on the Steam Deck, there's now a relatively simple way to check how much of your Steam library is currently certified compatible with the Steam Deck. This new website, Check My Deck, not to be mispronounced, lets you use your Steam ID as an input and then sees which game Valve has already marked as verified, playable or unsupported. For now, plenty of games didn't get any verification from Valve, so a lot should be in the unknown category. Personally, 16% of my games are marked as playable, that's 34 games, and only 4 are unsupported, including, unfortunately, Halo The Master Chief Collection or Vermintide 2. Come on guys, just one click to enable EAC support and you're moving up to verified. On that note, the review process is still going, with more than 600 games now being marked as playable or verified for the Steam Deck. And this concludes this video. It was made possible by Slimbook and they're letting you get a 150 euros discount on your very own Linux Ultrabook, the Slimbook Executive. It's got a 3K display, a wonderful keyboard, a magnesium chassis, a great trackpad, and at 150 euros off, it's very much a no-brainer. Use this offer code that I also linked in the description below to get access to that discount. But do be quick because stocks are very limited. So thank you everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write me a comment. And if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. If you want to help support the channel, you can also join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!